Here I've got a nice classic geometry problem, and I'm not sure of the origin of this problem, but I've seen it show up in a lot of different places, including several different contests, maybe with slightly different wordings. So let's see what we've got. We want to find the angles alpha, beta, gamma of all possible triangles where tangent of alpha, tangent of beta, and tangent of gamma are all positive integers. So I mean natural numbers here. And so here I've laid out my triangle. There's angle alpha, beta, and gamma. We're going to use the following two facts, which we will prove. First is that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is pi, or in other words, it's 180 degrees. And then next is this sum formula for the tangent function. Well, since we've got a triangle drawn right here, let's quickly sketch out the proof of this first fact. So what we'll do is take the base of this triangle and then move it up to the top and draw a parallel line that goes through this vertex. So this is parallel to the base and it goes through this vertex. So we know that there's a unique such line because we're in the plane, we're in flat space. Okay. And then furthermore from here, there are some standard angle chasing results that will tell us that this angle gamma will be the same as this angle right here. So that has angle measure gamma. And this angle alpha will be the same as this measure right here. That has angle measure alpha. But now notice alpha plus beta plus gamma makes a straight line, but that means alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180 degrees or pi radians. So of course we used some angle chasing facts here, but you know, we can only go so far into the background. Okay, now let's look at this tangent sum identity, which we will solve using complex numbers. So let's first set z equal to a plus bi, but then recall that that also has a polar form of r e to the i theta. And then we'll say w is equal to c plus di, but that also has a polar form. I'll write it as s e to the i phi. And then furthermore, from the polar to rectangular conversion, we know that the tangent of theta is equal to b over a. It's the imaginary part of z over the real part of z. So that's a standard result. Just essentially, you can take it from polar coordinates and not even worry about the fact that we're in complex numbers here. Furthermore, we have tangent of phi is equal to d over c for the same kind of reason. And then from here, we'll take these two complex numbers and multiply them. We'll see that z times w will be equal to ac minus bd plus i times ad plus bc. But then the angle attached to this, well, I'll write it as capital R e to the i theta plus phi. So that gives us some motivation of how to find the tangent of theta plus phi. It'll be the imaginary part of this product divided by the real part of this product. So we have AD plus BC over AC minus BD. But keeping in mind that we wanna look for something like this, we've got a one in this position. So let's maybe multiply the numerator and the denominator by one over AC. So let's see what that'll give us. So that's going to give us D over C plus B over A. That's just from distributing through to the terms in the numerator and then canceling over one minus B over A times D over C. But now notice that that is exactly this formula over here once we do the substitutions as defined by tangent of theta and tangent of phi. So we have this is equal to tangent of theta plus tangent of phi over one minus tan theta times tan phi. Where let's just really spell it out, this tangent of theta term is occurring right here and then this tangent of phi term is occurring right here. Okay, great. So we sketched a proof of these two facts, and now we're ready to tackle our goal. 
Okay, so let's start by noticing that we can take zero and rewrite it as the tangent of pi. Remember, tangent is sine over cosine, but sine of pi is equal to zero. That's well known. But now that's gonna be equal to the tangent of alpha plus beta plus gamma. Given the sum of the interior angles of a triangle fact that we talked about before. But now we can group these and apply this formula two times. So let's group them like this first. So we'll have tangent of alpha plus beta and then plus gamma. So that's going to give us the tangent of alpha plus beta plus the tangent of gamma over one minus the tangent of alpha plus beta times the tangent of gamma. Let's bring this zero down and notice we have zero is equal to this rational expression. But let's recall that a rational expression equals zero if and only if the numerator is equal to zero. So that tells us that we have this numerator is equal to zero, tangent of alpha plus beta plus tangent of gamma equals zero. But maybe we should move some things around and we'll notice that tangent of alpha plus beta must be equal to negative tangent of gamma. From here, we'll apply this rule again where theta is being played by alpha and phi by beta. So here we have this will be tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta over one minus tangent of alpha tangent of beta equals minus tangent of gamma. From here, maybe we'd like to cross multiply. That'll leave us with tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta equals minus tangent of gamma plus tangent of alpha tangent of beta tangent of gamma. So we've got this nice equation for tan alpha beta and tangent gamma. Okay, so here I'll move this to the top of the board, but while I do that, I'll also move this minus tangent gamma over to the other side, so we'll be left with tan alpha plus tan beta plus tan gamma. So far, we've reduced our problem to solving the following equation. We have tangent alpha plus tangent beta plus tangent gamma is equal to tangent alpha times tangent beta times tangent gamma. And here we've only used the fact that alpha, beta, and gamma define a triangle. We have not used the fact that these values of tangent are natural numbers. Well, that's exactly what we wanna do now. So from here, I've assigned tangent alpha to the value of A, tangent of beta to B, and tangent of gamma to C. And so that means we have changed our given problem to solving A plus B plus C equals A, B, C, over natural numbers. So in other words, for A, B, and C and natural numbers. So let's see how we can do that. We'll notice that the left hand and the right hand side of this equation, so in other words, the entire equation, is symmetric any way we switch A, B, and C. So that means without loss of generality, we can assume some ordering on A, B, and C, and then any solution we get with this ordering will have to permute to give us all such solutions. So here we've got A is less than or equal to B is less than or equal to C. Okay, so notice that that tells us that A, B, C, which is equal to A plus B plus C is less than or equal to C plus C plus C, which is obviously equal to three times C. So what I did is I just replaced A and B with the largest thing, creating an inequality. But from here, we can cancel a C from both sides of the inequality. Given the fact that C is a natural number and that it is not zero, that gives us a new inequality. A times B is less than or equal to three, which breaks us into three cases. So our first case, I'll call it our second case, case two, and then finally case three. And so for case one, we'll take A times B is equal to one. We'll notice A and B have to be natural numbers. 
So one would be the first possible natural number, obviously. Our second one will be a times b equals two, and our third one will be a times b equals three. And we're in luck here because there's only one way to multiply a pair of two natural numbers and achieve one, two, or three. That's because two and three are primes, and one is obviously playing a very special role here. So if a times b is one, that means a is equal to b is equal to one. We can throw that into our original equation and we'll have two plus c is equal to c. But that tells us that two is equal to zero. But that clearly doesn't make any sense at all. So this case does not give us a solution. Okay, so now let's move on to this second case. So that's when a times b is equal to 2. Recall that we started by assuming that a is less than or equal to b. That means a must be equal to 1 and b must be equal to 2. Okay, plugging that into our original equation, we'll see that 3 plus c is equal to 2 times c. Okay, but that means that c is equal to 2. So that means a, b, and c can take on the values 1, 2, and 3, and then all permutations. So I'll just make that squiggly loop to say that, that we're also taking all permutations of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Now let's look at the case when a times b is equal to 3. So that means that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 3. Putting that together, we see that 4 plus c is equal to 3 times c. But solving, that tells us that c is equal to 2. Again, that looks like the same solution we have here up to permutation. But given the fact that we started with this assumption of the ordering, and now we have c is less than b, we actually get no solution from this case. Okay, so that means we've got solutions for a, b, and c. Now we just have to write those in terms of the angles. So let's maybe clean up the board and we'll do just that. So we just determined that our solution triple a, b, c had to be equal to one, two, three. But notice that means that tangent of alpha equals one, tangent of beta equals two, and tangent of gamma equals three. And I should say, and all permutations, but I won't write those up. I mean, essentially when you take permutations, you're really just talking about maybe like transforming the triangle, maybe by rotation or reflection. I'll let you guys think about this. We'll just focus on this solution. Okay, but if tangent of alpha is equal to one, that means that alpha is equal to the inverse tangent or the arc tan of one, but we actually have an angle for that, it's pi over four. But the other two, we don't have nice closed forms for. If tangent of beta is two, then beta is the arc tan of two, and then gamma is the arc tan of three for similar reasons. So in the end, we have solutions of alpha equals pi over four, beta is inverse tangent two, and gamma is inverse tangent three, and then we can take all permutations. But again, taking all permutations is really just doing a symmetry of the original triangle. And that's a good place to stop.